And I want to talk about design and consistency. You know, being consistent in your methodology is going to be really important, especially when you are approaching any sort of new haircut that you're going to do on a client behind the chair. When we are working, I want to focus on a few things. Number one, exactly what I'm, what I'm doing and working in a place where I can see what I'm doing. I've seen many, many times when we are working and you are either too high and you're bending over too low or you're too low looking up high and you can't really see your work. What I really want to focus on is being able to see your work. Two, working very neat. Um, not only will it make your haircuts look better in the long run, but it'll actually speed up your time because you don't have to go back and guess where, you, where the start finishes. And number three, practicing consistency. I think that is one of the key things that we can work on as hair cutters behind the chair is being consistent. How many of you have had a client come in and say, you know, that haircut that you gave me two times ago, that was perfect. Can you do that again? Well, you're like, um, what did I do? So as long as you kind of work on the foundations, you won't ever get into that, that problem of inconsistency. So we're gonna start on our graduation here and we're gonna get going. So based on what I said, the constants, we're gonna work on having constant moisture in the hair. We're gonna work on constant working with our tools, which is our comb and our shears today and we're going to talk about constant finishing as well. So we're gonna start with sectioning. Sectioning for diagonal haircuts is very, very important. Now I'm gonna go through this, and I'm going to section the hair for you. And I'm gonna turn this so you can see. All right. So working nice and neat. Now we created a center part for you guys. And now we're gonna go in and get our haircut ready. Now, working nice and neat is key. So I'm gonna take even sections and I'm gonna get this hair out of the way. Now, one key feature of working nice and neat, you guys, is perception behind the chair. Not only is it being perceived from your client that you know what you're doing because you're working nice and neat, it also gives that perception of everybody else around you, okay? So we're gonna remove this hair, we're gonna get it out of the way, okay? And work on the other side, we're gonna get rid of, the, rid of that hair. All right. There we go. Now that we have our subsection, I went from occipital bone down and what we're going to do is then create a parting to start our haircut. Now how we're going to do this is we're going to take another center section, okay? Let me get that hair out of the way. Again, another center section, get that hair out of the way. Now what I want to do is start one inch above the hairline and I'm going to section to the corner of the hairline. Okay, so I'm going one inch up to the corner. I'm going to let that hair down. I'm going to remove, get this hair out of the way. Okay. On the other side, if that hair is in your way, let's just tuck that away. We'll get back to that real soon. All right. So here's our first section of hair. Now this is going to be the most important cut that we do on this entire haircut because this is our guide for the entire thing. And the great thing about this is working, rep working with repetition. We have our diagonal section right here, which is very nice and clear for you guys to see. One inch above the hairline, down to the corner. And we are going to take that hair and we are going to start our haircut now. A lot of times, what we would do is take our comb, place it into the hair, and start a guide for the haircut. But we're actually going to be creating our shape and then placing our perimeter line at the very end. So what we're gonna do 
is we're going to start this off and I want you to really look at where my sectioning is. Okay, so I have my diagonal line right here. That is going to be my that is going to be my section for the initial cut and it also will be my guide for the rest of the haircut. So starting here, we're going to pick up this hair and I'm going to pick the hair up exactly at the angle of which my section is sectioned out. So I'm going to pick that hair up. I'm going to place my fingers and I really want to look at tension because we're talking about consistencies, right? We're talking about consistency with our tension. Notice that I'm only using the wide teeth of the comb. Keeping consistency with um, the moisture content is consistent. The sectioning is going to be consistent and my diagonal line is going to stay consistent all throughout the haircut. So now that I have my section in place, I'm going to pick that hair up. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to bring the hair down. Now this is where you get to choose where you want to start building that line and that weight of our diagonal graduation. I'm going to bring this down about two inches and I'm going to take this down. I'm at the exact angle of my section. And I'm going to comb that down. Now immediately when you start taking that section, you're going to see that graduation in place, okay? And so right off the bat, our first cut is the guide for the rest of the haircut. Now, what I'm going to do is take my next section, one inch above, down to the corner of the hairline. I'm going to bring that hair down. Now my hair is starting to get a little bit drying out. What do we do for that? Take our water bottle, give it a nice mist. I don't want the hair to be dripping wet. I'm going to move around, comb that hair down. I'm going to scoop that hair up at the same angle that I did on the previous section. Bring that hair down. I have my previously cut section here, that's my guide. Looking underneath, there's my guide. Cut the hair and let the hair down. Comb the hair down to start building that shape so you can see it. Doing this and fluffing is not gonna do anything for us. What we wanna do is have concise combing to start showing us that graduation. And you can start seeing it right there. Okay, next section I'm going to go back and forth on this mannequin head to show you this technique because it is important to have consistency. So I'm going to do a section on one side and then work to the next side. Okay. Get that hair out of your way. I'm going to take a one inch section following the same sectioning that I initially did. Now, people ask all the time, do they always have to be one inch sections? Absolutely not. You can take whatever hair is allowed, depending on thickness, density. This is mannequin hair, so we can take our standard one inch sections. Now. Next section, I'm going to split it off right in the middle, just like we did underneath. I'm going to place my comb at the same angle that I did previously. I'm going to place my fingers into the hair. I'm going to then find my guide underneath. I found my guide. Take that hair away. Again. Following my guide, again, instantly seeing that graduation line right there. Now, since we're placing our graduation in first, we are going to be able to start building in that weight line here. And once we get to the occipital bone, we are no longer going to be 
bring it any higher than that. But at the end, we're going to be placing our line at the very end, so that way we won't have any sort of inconsistency when we place that line. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this also helps us with never taking off too much hair, okay? So when you initially place your line for a haircut and that line is too short, well, you can't get that hair back. So this helps us bring in the weight line, create the shape internally, then place the line at the end. All right, again, we're going to scoop that hair up, bring it down, find our guide underneath, take that hair away. A lot of people ask about cross-checking. How do you check that? Really easy, guys. So you're gonna take a horizontal section, pull it out to you. If it is straight, which mine is, you're in good luck. If you start checking hair and you're cutting off lengths like this, you might have lost your place. Okay. Now that we have a nice solid shape right there, we're going to keep building that up. We're going to get this no higher than occipital bone. And then we're going to follow this all the way through on both sides going back and forth so we can stay consistent so we don't lose ourselves within the haircut. Let's get after it. All right. Margot Therese, what's up, girl? How are you doing today? Shannon, how are you? Mark Dolan, how you doing, buddy? Francesca Chow. Francesca Chow. <laughs> hey, guys. Glad you could make it. It's a beautiful day in Minneapolis. Janelle. Janelle. Janelle, how are you doing, hon? Daisy from Belgium. Daisy from Belgium, how are you? I have... Some amazing artists here and a bunch of Lanza educators. I love that as well. Okay. Again, guys, we take our one inch section, we have our diagonal angle, making sure we have constant moisture within the hair. Section this right down the middle, and we're going left to right. <laughs> Hugs to you, Shannon. All right. Any questions out there without, other than just saying, hey? Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Cool. Well, kick back and relax. Giving you some uh, haircutting skills here. So as we're working up the head, our sections are getting wider and wider. So what we're going to have to do is split them and work in two, two different pieces here. So I'm going to split that off again. I'm taking hair from underneath, okay? At the same angle of, as my section. So I'm placing my comb at the same angle as that section that I, that I made. I'm not going at a horizontal. I'm keeping everything constant at a diagonal. My sectioning, my combing, everything is at a diagonal. Find my guide, take that hair off. Now, put that down and see that graduation build. You know, the great thing about this haircut and this technique is the fact that you can use whatever tool you want to use. You can use a razor. You can do, you can chip away at it, okay? You can cut everything blunt like I'm doing right now. And as you can see, we're cutting that graduation in. And I think it's really important to talk to you guys about graduation and cutting graduation as a technique and not a haircut. I'm not teaching you guys a haircut, even though at the end we will have a finished product. What I'm teaching you is to properly use grad diagonal graduation in with what we do behind the chair to make it easier for you guys and make sense. There's my guide underneath. 
Okay, making sure my finger placement is exactly where it needs to be. There's my guide. Bring the hair down and cut. You notice I'm not cut, 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 cutting. It's making one clean cut, being sure about what I'm cutting and then moving on. Okay. Taking my section, finding my guide underneath. There it is. What if you don't want as steep of a graduation? Well, that's the thing. This is not going to turn out into, you know, get your manager haircut, John and K plus eight. What this is going to turn into is a short bob. So if you don't want that high of graduation, lower your, lower your fingers more. Now this haircut could be done technically vertically, okay, or horizontally if you're going to take very small sections and pull everything out. You could cut this vertically, diagonally, or horizontally. So to answer your question, if you don't want it that stacked up, do not, you can lower your fingers and just have lower elevation. That's it. Okay. Again, taking a one inch section. The nice thing about this is showing you guys the building weight aspect of this haircut is the trick and the technique. What we're gonna be doing at the end of this is showing you how to minimize, minimize the weight because although we're seeing some very strong structured haircuts right now, we might be able to soften this up or we'll be able to soften it up the way you see fit. Okay. Again, I'm gonna take this section of hair, find my guide, and I'll look at my fingers. They're at the same angle as that section. I want you to notice the tension that I'm putting on that hair as well. You don't see any bubbles, you don't see any loose loose hairs, okay? It's, it's very constant, find my guide, and it's very neat, okay? Take that hair away. Seeing that graduation happening. Shannon says if this was any cleaner, she'd call you a surgeon. Oh, Shannon. I miss you, Shannon. She's the most positive woman on social media, I swear. All right. So, building that graduation in, remember, this is not the all haircut. This is a technique, you guys. What we're going to be doing is placing a line at the very end to create the haircut. So Hi asks, do you always keep the head upright while doing a graduation? You know, I do for this part of the haircut, um, for, that's a really good question Hi, thank you. Uh, what I would do at the very end, I may put her chin down just to clean up the neckline, but I like to cut hair how the hair lives and nobody I know walks around with their chin down. So cutting the hair upright and how it lives helps me dictate where and what I'm doing a lot easier and better. Okay, again, taking my diagonal sections, this is where things, we get past the round of the head, and so we're gonna start getting to, towards the front of the hair. So Guadalupe asks, yeah. you have sharp scissors, what brand are you using? Okay, so the thing about shears, is use <laughs> what works well for you. Keep them maintained. Um, I have a few. Um, these particular ones are my Hanzo shears. I also like my Arc shears, which are really, really great as well. So I hope that answers your question. These are seven inch shears that I'm using. Um, I also use them in six and a half and sixes. Okay, as you can see there, 
We start on this side. We're going to build that shape. So, no. go ahead. Liz said, yeah. I love this cut. I'm going to have to get a mannequin and do it. You know, I really hope you do, Liz, because the one thing that it'll help you is keeping consistent motions that you're going through without the, throughout the haircut. What we're doing is it's a practice of technique, not learning a specific haircut. I think graduation is one of those great things that if you take it back, back to the Sassoon days, it never goes out of style. You see graduation in every haircut that you see on social, or most haircuts you see on social. There's some aspect of graduation. Now, I just noticed that this hair up front is getting a little dry, okay? Again, consistency, let's wet that down. So as I'm pulling on that hair, the elasticity stays the same. All right. Now, when we start moving into the front, what I want you guys to notice is I'm pulling everything back to a visual straight off the head at that corner of the hairline. So even this hair way up here gets brought back to a visual right there at the hairline. Again. Okay. Is there another question? So Brenda says, Hi, Brenda. do you have special dry cutting shears or can they be used for wet and dry the shears that you're using? You know, I completely respect the idea of having wet to dry shears. For me, I like to use a shear that is multi-faceted that I can use wet and or dry. Um, and so for me, no. Jessica said that you taught her this haircut in Fargo and she loves it. Oh, Jessica, how are you? Um, Mark Dolan was wondering whose lovely voice is asking the questions. <laughs> so. <laughs> and Team Laza said, it's the voice of a tiny angel. I just added the word tiny. Oh. So everybody, this is Courtney Warford, my absolutely better half, partner in crime, partner in life. She is helping facilitate this class. Couldn't do it without her. Again, following exactly what we did on both sides, creating that graduation, getting this hair out of the way, repeat on the other side, adding some moisture because again we want to keep our sectioning constant, our moisture constant, and if we let this get dry, what will happen? We'll have inconsistency within the haircut. Any more questions? Do you find it easier to cut left to right or right to left, depending on whether you're left-handed or right-handed, does that matter? You know, I think that's a really great question and thank you for asking. If you noticed, I started this haircut on my left side and then I went to my right. And then I started again on the left going to my right, but then I started on the right going back to my left. And so for me to mix it up that way, is just a way to keep myself honest because we all have a strong side, right? A side that we're more comfortable with. Um, when you start mixing up that side, it makes you think more exactly how you're holding that hair within the section. And so for me, that's kind of my little, my little two cents in how I keep myself consistent within the section. So thank you for asking. Again, taking my section down. Diana asks, does it matter where your client parts their hair? You know, it does. And what I would say is cut off that part line. Just like a long layered haircut. Gia says, Michael, the way you section your comb is so precise. She loves it. <laughs> Thanks, girl. Miss you. Hope California's treating you well. All right. You know, it's one of those things about being consistent within your work. And I think that it's very, very important for us to practice our craft. And, you know, haircutting is such a craft. And it started 
in a place that, like for this, building graduation as a haircut, well, this to me is more of a technique because I can use what I'm doing here in so many different ways. Okay, again, taking a section, pulling it down. I'm not going any higher than that occipital bone because if I do, what's gonna happen? You're gonna have a haircut and that's gonna definitely need to go see and talk to the manager, number one, and that's not really what I'm looking for. So, finding my guide, very nice and neat right there. You can see it right through that hair. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna take one cut, comb that hair down. I'm not fluffing it up, you guys. I'm not trying to see what kind of hot mess I can make out of this. I'm just trying to create a very, very nice, neat, clean shape that I can then go into and customize per my client. All right, bringing everything back to that corner. See the guide underneath right there. Again, I can fit a lot of hair in my hands. If you can't, take this in sections, okay? Comb that down nice and neat. As you can see, very clean graduation right there. We're building that weight. So then we can go in and place our finished line. So this isn't gonna look like a huge stacked haircut at the end because when I place my line, I end up going in right about there, okay? Okay, we're gonna switch this around to the other side. Genevieve Weiner says hello. Who does? Genevieve Weiner. Genevieve, miss you too, girl. We got people from Austin, Texas, Costa Rica. What's up, Costa Rica? What's up, Austin? Greetings from Minneapolis. It's still cold here, but we're getting through just like everybody else. Okay. So. Going to the other side. What's the brand of your spray bottle? What's the brand of my spray bottle? Um, Sam V. Is it? Mm-hmm. Our buddy Sam Via has his... There we go. Works well. I know that there's other brands that do the exact same thing, but these misters, I think, is a one way to distribute um, moisture into the hair better than traditional old school hair uh, hairspray bottles or, or water bottles that's that spray like a pump hairspray hello from tammy zimmerman hey, tammy and, and bulgaria chris from indiana all right all right you guys so finding my guide underneath bringing the hair back to that corner There, there's our guide. Take that hair away. Again, comb that hair down, keep it nice and neat. Yeah, the great thing about this is when we're working this technique, again, we're not working the haircut, right? So this is a way to put into a shape. And the nice thing is, is at the very end, we're gonna place our perimeter. That way you can be really consistent because like I said, mentioned earlier, you know, it's happened to all of us at least once where you initially place your line and you're like, um, we're just gonna do a little undercut. That wasn't supposed to be that short. And so for us, placing the line at the end is a great way to keep it consistent. And also too, you know, if you're a big dry hair cutter, you can place your graduation, blow dry the hair, and then place your line. There are no rules. There are no rules. So James asks, some people like to use texturizing thinning shears to blend their graduation. What are for, your thoughts? For sure. You know, I think it's, you can use whatever you need to use to get the job done. I personally, James, am not a big uh, thinning shear user or texturizing shear user um, For me, it's I do use them, but I'm not I'm not big on Texturizing shears to soften line the nice thing about diagonal graduation 
is that instead of doing a horizontal graduation to build weight and or vertical graduation, over directing everything back to a corner and cutting on a diagonal is creating softness. So when I'm done um, doing the graduation portion of this and I go in and I cut my line, it's actually going to have some softness. So it takes away some of the work that I need to do at the tail end of this haircut to customize it and soften it up. Who are some of the stylists that inspire your precise cutting skills? You know, one of my, one of my favorites is Oscar Bond, um, former Lanza creative director, uh, Sassoon, he worked at Sassoon in London. Uh, he's also a, a Hanzo educator right now, but he's a very precise precision hair cutter. And I feel like once you understand and know the rules, you can break them. And so by working our craft and creating precision graduation, precision layering, precision blunt lines, like that's when you can then expand and get super creative and be all funky with your haircuts if you choose to do so. Does that answer the question? I think so. Yeah, cool. Anybody else? Anybody else? Questions? No? All right. Again, I'm going to go to this side. I'm going to bring everything back to what? My corner. There we go. This is the easy part, you guys, because there's not as much hair left, and I have a very strong guideline. So take that cut, bring everything down to my guide, which is the corner of that hairline, which is right here. It's where I want to bring the hair to. So Liz asks, do you prefer a razor, like a straight razor one with no guard to a thinning shear? <laughs> I will use a, a razor with a guard um, when I'm working behind the chair, um, simply because it's safer. You know, I hope that answers that question. Genevieve says, one of the best cutting classes ever was you and Oscar Bond. Changed my haircut game for life. See, old school. Love that. Again, last, last piece here. There we go. Now, again, we're going we're gonna to ask ourselves, there's our graduation. Cross-checking. How do we do that? I'm going to pick up a section of hair in the back. I'm going to bring it out. If that is straight, great. If you're picking up and having to cut pieces like this, you've really lost yourself within the haircut. But what did we do to not get lost within the haircut? We took diagonal sections on both sides. We brought the hair to our stationary guide, which was no higher than occipital bone. We scooped the hair in the exact same way that we did section in it, so it had the same diagonal line. Our fingers were parallel with that. We cut our hair, cut the hair once, and finished all the way through. Now that we got to both sides, yeah, and take a little cross check. We're good because we brought everything back to its its place. Now, what do we do if it's off a little bit? Well, that's okay because what you're going to be doing is placing that perimeter at the end. What I really want to focus on is if this is where it needs to be, which it is. So now, what you've been waiting for, we're going to place our line, okay? I'm going to comb everything down with intention. I'm going to look at where the hairline is. We got a, a bit of working room here, but I want to keep it pretty short. So I'm going to take it just below where the hairline is. I'm going to place my comb. And I'm going to go straight in and take that hair away. Okay? Can you do the same cut with thin and fine texture? Absolutely. 
the thing about it is you are going to take much larger sections, which will then make the haircut go a lot faster. Okay, what you see is I am placing the hair within the comb, right? Bringing that down, following the head shape, but then we have all this hair in here. If you simply take your shears underneath it, give it a little tap, get it nice and neat and even, we're gonna go in and take that hair away. Okay. Again, turn the hair. Turn the head. And this is where we're placing our line, you guys. So we have all this hair and we have an option. If they don't have a lot of hair, you can maybe do it in one section. For me, I might want to split this up. All right. Follow our guide. Take our shears, put it, give it a little tap. Take that hair away. What's your favorite hair cutting technique? Favorite hair cutting technique. That's a, that's a good one. Um, I don't know if I have one, but I feel like if there is a genre of hair cutting that I really enjoy doing, I would say that it is um, precision haircuts and or anything that I can incorporate Anything that I can incorporate making a shape from something completely different. You know, doing, doing a trim is, is great, pays the bills, but when you can have a project and do a major transformation, I think that's when, that's, that's, that makes it a lot of fun for me. Again, find my previously cut section right there. Okay. It's starting to look a lot better, right? We have our graduation there, our nice clean line rounding the head. Seeing our previously cut hair. Now this is one thing that I, I think is really important, is that when we are working around the face, you wanna stretch that hairline a little bit. And what that means, a little moisture. What that means is we're following the hairline Okay, so that way when we place our line, it doesn't jump up, okay? So if you comb this straight down, and if I was to cut this, once it dried, it would end up up here, okay? So what we're gonna do is stretch the hairline. Okay. Mark Dolan wants to know, uh... When was the last time you brought Sexy back? Oh, Dolan, it never went away. But, um, so that's just what we have. We have our graduation put in place all the way around. We have our very clean line. I'm gonna do the other side. And then I'm gonna show you the finished results because I have a finished head waiting for you. That looks really nice. Again, keep things nice and clean. Okay. Place our comb, follow our guide. Now we're wrapping up time here, you guys. I'd love to answer any more questions that you guys have about graduation and or embarrassing questions like Mark Dolan asked me. There we go. Stretching that hairline. Back. Genevieve says, Michael Dolan, you are truly one of the most well-rounded stylists I know. What can't you do? Oh. Got a lot of fans. Margo says she loves seeing the shapes you create behind the chair every day and can't wait until we can get back in the salon. You know, I can't wait either, Margo. And, um, you know, the great thing is I work with and next to some amazing artists in the industry. Margo and Mark are two of them. Catelyn Weston, big ups to her. Um, 
and everybody else, you know? So it really, really works well for me to be inspired by the people around me. And I think that that's, that's the trick is being inspired by the people around you. All right, how's that looking? Good. All right, you guys. So now that we got through the haircut, we placed our lines. She's wet. She's got a, a really nice, strong shape, and everything that everything was cut blunt, right? I didn't use any texturizing techniques yet, but there you can see it has a nice rounded shape, a nice clean line here. It's consistent. How does that look for you guys? Yeah. So, based on what we learned, thank you, is taking a step back and looking at what we're doing in a systematic way, okay? We're creating graduation, whether it is stack graduation or very soft graduation, like this is. This is gonna be a short version of a long haircut, which will have the ability to grow up and be a very beautiful long bob over time. And so this is a great way to keep it fresh, keep it new and different. Thank you, Liz. And this is the exact same haircut that I just did and zero texturizing. So when you ask, you know, how, about texturizing, you know, if you're doing it in a way where you're creating softness within the haircut itself, it has a very, very strong shape without the texturizing, which can definitely work if you want to personalize it and make it textured, you can do that as well. So for today, my question and my hope for you guys is to practice your craft. You know, go into a haircut, go into a technique and do something that you wouldn't normally do. Um, diagonal graduation is one of those things that is a great tool to have in your back pocket for when you need it. And so, from us at Evolution, thank you so much. It's been a blast. If you have questions, kind of hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, on the Lonza page as well, and I'll answer all of your questions. But I uh, hope you guys have a great day. Let's all get through this quarantine together, and we'll see you soon. Peace out.